should not be afraid that I'm going to read you this book. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour. Buenos dias. Ohio gazaimas. Hello and welcome and thank you. Today I'm going to ask you to get out of your comfort zone into something that people fear but should not. So with that, we're going to chat about my mantra, style, ease, and grace. These women have something in common. Meg is the CEO of Hewlett Packard. I'm thinking that you Denverites have heard of it. I helped do the corporate planning for them 20 years ago. This lovely woman, obviously, has fed us for years. She is the CEO of Campbell Soup. This is one of my favorite people in the world. I do not know her. I have been in her corporate headquarters, which houses more of the, lovely, uh, the loveliest art I've ever seen. Jeannie actually took a company that was a powerhouse in the world. IBM was at $130 a share, and it fell like a rock, and everyone said, the big blue's going under. This woman is the reason that IBM is skyrocketing because she said IBM should focus on service. Who are we as women if we're not about service? The company is now making millions of dollars and this woman did it. And Big Blue used to have a large sales force and they were blue serge suits. All of them were male. Jeannie has put in thousands of skirts. And this woman, I think, is lovely. She was born in India. Indra is head of Pepsi and was born in another country. And beautiful Ursula is head of Xerox. What do they have in common with me and with each of you? They did it through style, ease, and grace. They walked through the glass doors. They walked into the corner office. And they did marvelous things. They created billions of dollars of earnings for the world. They're global players. They've stabilized. They've given jobs to the world. And they are us. And this last happens to be my personal favorite. I have met her twice. She is the woman who is the most influential woman in the world as voted the last nine years. So with that, I am Joe Roebuck Pearson. So lovely to meet you. My husband is stellar. He's funny. He's handsome. He's in the Hall of Fame, and he says it's absolutely wonderful that they put him in it before he died. He's also an intellectual. So that means that our dinner conversations are wonderful, and I'm always challenged. So if you invite me to a dinner party at your house, I'm going to be able to play very good tennis because I'm going to be very up on current topics. He also is kind and incredibly supportive of my career. He and I have nous avons en vie unique. The French call an only child a unique child. We had a baby woman, Mackenzie. She, on November the 18th, was hooded for her MBA, her international MBA at Daniel School of Business, and has opened the doors and taken her friends with her to practice style, ease, and grace. And we're very, very proud of her. On March the 19th, she married a stellar young man. How exciting is that? In my world, we use a term called having it all. I love my career. I'm incredibly successful. I've been a businesswoman for 20 years and have had a few opportunities. I have a great husband and a great daughter, and I make a mean booth boarding home. So I do have it all. Stylies and Grace comes, Mackenzie would tell you, from this small book, the Book of Etiquette. That being said, we have used it to open doors. So my goal for you today is that you take a look at any door you want to look at in the world. And maybe they've slammed the doors on you in the past. Or worst case scenario, they locked them on some of us, right? We're now going to go through the door. So I have a very tiny, tiny part to play in your life. I'm going to get you through those doors because you 
are going to, you have everything it takes to win after you get there. But we have to get to the other side. That being said, I want to tell you my favorite story about why etiquette is so powerful. And then I want to tell you about my favorite request. Rockefeller had built an empire. He had wealth beyond thought. He had businesses that you couldn't count. He was very proud of his family. He adored his employees. And he was ready to turn over the reins to an heir apparent. The vetting was fast and furious. Hundreds of people wanted to be his next heir. There were four people, all men, no women, who were asked to be the finalist. They would have an interview over dinner with Rockefeller. One of them did something very right, and the other three went to their graves, being very sorry that they had not been through my etiquette classes. <laughs> what was it? They served the entree. The chef had made it. This man tasted his food before he reached for the salt and pepper. The other three seasoned something that the chef may have made, taken him to make two weeks at Aru. And Rockefeller knew that this man would be very careful with his family, his reputation, his employees, and his businesses. He would think first before he used the seasoning. Is that a good important? It's small, but the small things count. My favorite request was from an elementary school. Hello, Joe. Would you teach our children etiquette? Actually, we'd like to give you, have you do an auditorium speech. Pas a problem. I would love to. I hung the phone up, and I realized that my audience was going to be K kindergarten through second grade, 255 darlings in the auditorium, and I'm supposed to teach them etiquette. I said, what can I teach them? I chose to teach them to eat a cookie and to introduce their parents to their teacher. So everything was so exciting. It was just like hearing a room full of beautiful birds because all the teachers and the parents were walking through the aisles with thousands of cookies. And then I had to tell them that they had to keep the cookie in their hands and not eat it. Then we had one bite at a time off the cookie, and we sat and we talked to our friend, our little friend next door. After that, we had volunteers, we had parents, we had teachers, and we had children. The parents were over the moon. Their child was doing something they thought was impossible. The teachers, we do not honor our teachers. The teachers had tears in their eyes. It was my favorite, favorite, favorite thing. So with that, it's time probably to open the door for all of you. I have three challenges. The first one is that you learn table manners. And you use the table manners you learn in your home as well as at your business meetings. That means that when you have your cereal in the morning, you have a napkin there. You pull it off and you put it in your lap the first thing. First. The second one is my favorite saying. If you have to choose between being right and kind, always choose kind because it's the right thing to do. And my third is introductions. So with that, I please would like to ask you to stand. We're going to have an exercise. I would like each of you to introduce someone to someone. Let me read you. People worry about what they're doing wrong. They worry about ketchup on their shirts. They shouldn't. This they should really be concerned with. It is inexcusably rude of the one who knows the other two to chat with one and leave the other unacknowledged and left out, standing by if she did, as if she did not exist. I see sixth graders turning their backs on their friends. I see people all over, restaurants not introducing people. I am going to teach you how to introduce yourself to someone else. There's a lovely woman right here. I'm going to make eye contact with you. Could you come forward, please? Hello, my name is Joe Robert Pearson. I have been noticing you from across the room, and I wanted to meet you. Hello. 
and your name is? My name is Susanna. Thank you so much for the introduction. Oh, Susanna, I look forward to getting to know you. My friend is here, Helene. Helene, I would like to introduce Susanna. Hi, Helene. Now, everyone, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Now, I want you to turn to the person next to you and introduce yourself. Slowly re uh, repeat your name. Smile and try to remember their name. And if you don't remember it, ask them again. Go. I did it. We're good. Okay. We're going to live through telephone. Okay. Wasn't that fun? Now my challenge is to, at the elevator, to introduce yourself to someone. During the snacks, to introduce yourself to someone. I want you to introduce your children to other people's children. If you are considered the most charming, style, ease, and grace person in this town, you will be the first person asked to dinner. You will be on every foundation board and every endowment board. And lastly, your client ad advocates will start referring you to their best friends. Now, what a horrible branding. <laughs> Only by being courteous and starting to talk and introduce. It has been my pleasure to meet each one of you. It has been an incredible gift to interface with the power that's in this room as it relates to speakers, I have one more request. In the morning, touch your etiquette button when you wake up and keep it on all day long. And then through the day, think how you can be kind to someone and help someone. At the end of the day, when you're ready to go to sleep, I would like for you to just put it on pause. Merci beaucoup. You are ma merveilleuse.